So as some of you know, I started playing Sea of Thieves early last year. I made it to Pirate Legend, and was convinced by a viewer to try out Hourglass. Well, it didn't take long for me to earn the most valuable thing Hourglass has to offer. Before we get to that though, let's back up a little bit. I started playing Sea of Thieves because of its open world possibilities. You have this huge map, a boat to make your own, room for friends, events to do, and voyages to go on. You are the person who makes your own fun. Outside the targets of opportunity, like other players and random events, the outcome of your play session is a fairly open question. What if you really like PvP fights? What if you like the thrill of seeing another boat on the horizon and the looming conflict it proposes? Well, on this large map, it's not always guaranteed you'll see another player, let alone come in contact with one. And if you do, there's a good chance they're not interested in fighting. They have many ways to avoid it, forcing you to spend possibly most of that time just chasing them down. Then there's the other side of that coin, where the enemy ship is significantly larger than you. Sure, you could beat them, but let's say you're not the best at PvP. You want to fight, but maybe with the odds that are a little more even. Or maybe you have a ton of loot when that player shows up. You need the accommodations, you're trying to grind, and you aren't too keen on risking said loot. Or you are in a fight, and the moment you start winning, the enemy ship decides to run and run and run and run. There are a lot of potential hurdles for people who want to PvP, but I also understand there are many people who don't particularly care for it. Hourglass offers both of these groups something, and I would argue it offers players who prefer PvE even more value than the players who want to PvP. Now, I've never considered myself particularly good at PvP. And like many, my impressions of the Hourglass was that it was a sweat-filled masochistic endeavor with a pixel carrot at the end. But determined to get better and try something new, I went for the challenge. Got some supplies, put on my best outfit, cause well... If I die, I will die well dressed. And I started diving, and diving, and diving. Now, for those of you who are still unsure about how it works, here's some basic breakdowns. At its core, it's a queue system that tells the game, I want to fight another player slash crew. There's two ways to do it, offense and defense. If you just vote the hourglass up on your ship, you'll be put into the defensive queue. You can go about playing the game as normal, but whether or not you'll get to PvP isn't a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You can even be in an island in the middle of a voyage when suddenly you hear the battle music start, which means you have a window of time to make it back to your ship and be ready for that fight. The benefit here is at least you get a very clear warning before you start getting holes put in your ship. The game also creates a ring on the map that neither ship can leave or it will eventually be destroyed. While neither of you can leave, you're still on an open server so any other ship on that server can come and interfere with that fight if they see it and are so inclined. So you can't run and in my experience, the longer the fight goes, the more likely you are to get third party. You're also put up against someone who deliberately queued into offense with the same ship type looking for a fight. And despite what they say, but no consent. No consent. They are willing participants. On that note, voting up the hourglass and going into the offensive queue is way simpler. You vote on the war map, and once you do, you dive down below the seas and the matchmaking starts. Just a side note, this has got to be the coolest queue sequence ever. You take your ship under the ocean and are just chilling out underwater until the queue pops. Then once it does, this is badass music buildup as you rise from the depths like some elite skelly ship boss fight. You both could have been in the offensive queue or you just invaded someone else's server, but in either case, you're on a map potentially with other players like any other adventure fight, but you're in a cage match. I can only imagine how cool this would be in other open world style games like the Cycle Frontier, for example. So with that out of the way, back to what I think the most valuable thing you can get out of Hourglass is. Is it the gold and XP? Unless you're god tier at PvP, the pixel numbers on the screen can be pretty reliably earned faster in other ways. Is it the Blue Man Group costume? Is it the new Starvation Diet? I'm afraid these over-glorified Instagram filters for your digital pirate Barbie doll are not the most valuable things you can get out of Hourglass. What you get is actually one of the most valuable things you can get out of any general pursuit in life. Competence. You see, Hourglass offers you an on-demand education on how to be competent at one of the most important aspects of Sea of Thieves. If you are willing to pay the low cost, you will be taught vital lessons that will instantly improve your ability to sink other ships, but also how not to get sunk yourself while protecting any loot you may be carrying. And all it costs you is a little bit of effort. That's it. There's a decent amount of guides online, and even if the PvP videos you find aren't guides per se, you can pick up a lot of knowledge by simply observing competent players. Now don't get me wrong, earning these curses and the implicit game time required in order to attain them isn't nothing or meaningless. Well, maybe if you're AFKing your way to get them, then yes, they are in fact meaningless. But I digress. These curses are just trinkets at the end of the day. Nothing more than pixels that will likely be swapped in and out like any other piece of Barbie Dreamhouse accessory. The skill, knowledge, and the ability to deliberately seek out challenge will always be with you. For those of you that don't particularly care for PvP, going deliberately outside your comfort zone to learn a skill is a life lesson that can be built upon for other more important aspects of your life. It may seem small and irrelevant, but trust me, it is not. In game, however, you will notice that only after about 20-ish games of honest effort, your PvP skills will increase beyond the average adventure player by a lot. No, I mean seriously, defending your skull fort or loot in some cases will be painfully trivial. In addition to this, the advent of Hourglass in general, even when you're not using it, offers you less hostile servers because it gives people that really want to PvP an 
outlet that's not you while you're on adventure mode. Since Hourglass was put into the game, there's been improvements to the matchmaking, and I can say my experience has been pretty good. The matches have all been pretty even, and even when I lose handedly, I can always point to something that I did that caused that outcome. It also has served a good way to play Sea of Thieves in general when you don't have a lot of time. A single match at its longest is still shorter than any adventure grind session I've had, and can be exited quickly with no loss. It's a good way to end a session too, as you are likely stocked up on supplies anyways. If you're starting out, you can go with just basic supplies because one of you will make a critical error and the match will end quickly. Slowly, you'll learn what you need and what you don't. That confidence will build and so will your confidence. And that will make the rest of your time playing Sea of Thieves that much funner. So even if you only do it for one of the curses or some of the quick gold and XP, I highly encourage you to give Hourglass an honest shot. You, sure, you can AFK your way to one of these curses, but you'd be really missing out on the most valuable thing you can get out of Hourglass. Thanks again to everyone who made it through the video. And if you're interested in seeing my first impressions of Sea of Thieves and my road to Pirate Legend, check out these videos here. And don't forget to subscribe, have a great day, and as always, good hunting.